Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about an introduction to DeFi and yield farming. And in order to do so, we're actually going to bring on someone to the channel. His name is Taiki. He has his own YouTube channel. And I would encourage you, if you're not already subscribed to Taiki, go over to his channel right now, hit the subscribe button. We'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Make sure you guys go check him out because he covers a lot of things that we don't really cover on, on this channel. So it's a pleasure to have you here, Taiki. He's, he's had a YouTube channel for about six months. It's growing relatively quickly and I'm excited to see where it goes. So thanks for, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm really excited to be on Ben's channel. And in the past few months, it's, the crypto markets have been really volatile. So uh, your approach, like your calm, cool and collected uh, approach to the crypto markets has really helped me navigate the cryptoverse. But that being yeah, said, yeah. I'm really- so let's, just, let's just jump in. Like what yeah. is DeFi? What is yield farming for people that are entirely new? Like what would you, how do they get started on all this stuff? Yeah, so this is gonna be the overview of the video. Um, I, I'm like really new to the crypto space as well. I entered the crypto markets roughly six months ago. So I want to simply go over like, what is DeFi, right? And then go over two of the major sectors, right? Borrow and lending uh, and decentralized exchanges, and then go over yield farming, which DeFi and yield farming seems like a buzzword that a lot of people don't really understand, but I want to simplify it in the best way possible. And to go over that, I want to just go over a few examples. So when I think about DeFi, DeFi is... It's a killer use case for Ethereum and blockchain because it essentially allows for the peer-to-peer -peer borrowing, lending, and transfer of money, not through a financial intermediary, but through smart contracts and code. So DeFi essentially says, let's remove the middleman and see what happens. And to really understand the power of DeFi, I think going over you know, two protocols, right? DeFi uh, for lending and borrowing um, for Aave. And if you think about lending and borrowing, uh, this is how banks make money, right? So, you know, as retail investors, we take our hard-earned cash, right, our fiat, and deposit it into a bank. And the bank generously gives us a 0.05% interest rate, right? And the bank will take your money and just lend it out to, you know, I guess credit card loans or other businesses. They'll charge, you know, five to ten percent, and they clip the difference, and that's their profit. But DeFi says, you know, what if we remove the bank in the middle and replace the bank with a smart contract, a protocol? Uh, in this case, Aave. Aave is one of the largest DeFi lending and borrowing protocol, and it's uh, it's built on the Ethereum blockchain. Essentially, Aave removes the middleman with smart contracts, allowing anyone to be their own bank. So th this is what the user interface for Aave looks like. Um, there's roughly $8 billion locked in the protocol, at least on the Polygon ecosystem. If you combine Polygon and uh, Ethereum, there's over $20 billion locked. And if you look at the USDC tab here, you see that if you borrow uh, sorry, if you deposit USDC into Aave, you can earn roughly 1.73% in dollars, right? Which is much better than what the banking system gives you. And if you want to borrow dollars, uh, you don't have to ask for permission, right? If you, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no uh, AML KYC process. You don't need to apply for any loans. You, you just have to put, you just have to post collateral and borrow against that collateral. And because you know DeFi is anonymous, it's permissionless, it's trustless. All loans have to be over collateralized. So if I deposit $10,000 worth of collateral, I can borrow up to $8,000 against it, depending on the type of collateral that you post. Okay, so that's a brief overview of what a lending and borrowing protocol looks like. But now let's go over what a decentralized exchange looks like. So the largest the, the largest DEX on ETH is uh, Uniswap. I think Ben owns some tokens as well. And it's a decentralized exchange. It allows users to swap any ERC-20 token with another ERC-20 token without the need of a centralized intermediary. And the ERC-20 token just refers to a token on the Ethereum blockchain. So this is what the user interface looks like. You just you know, take one asset, let's say USDC, and if you want to buy ETH with it, you just say, you know, I have this much USDC, and I want to buy this much ETH, and you can just swap these to tokens uh, uh, immediately. And how this works on the back end is that there are things, uh, th these things called liquidity pools. Uh, and to simplify it, I like to think of these liquidity pools as little fish pools, where there's a 50-50 ratio of two assets. So in this case, USDC and ETH. And if you want to buy Ether with USDC, you essentially throw in USDC into the pool and pull out Ether on the other side. So this is only possible because there are 
thousands of people all around the world that provide liquidity uh, for this particular pool. So you see that there's over $400 million locked into this particular protocol. But if you think about it, like what is the incentive for people uh, to provide liquidity? Well, the incentive is that uh, these liquidity providers earn a 0.3% fee on all trades proportional to their share of the pool. Uh, so if you provide liquidity, you essentially earn the fees that Uniswap charges. And you see that in the last 24 hours, over roughly a million dollars uh, of fees have been generated. So just to do a quick experiment, a thought experiment, you know, let's say there's a roughly $400 million locked into liquidity. And let's say I'm a whale, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a whale, but let's say I provide $4 million of liquidity uh, to Uniswap, uh, to this USDC ETH pool, which means I have 1% of all the liquidity, right? which means I'm entitled to 1% of the fees generated by this particular pool. So if I deposit a $4 million, then I would earn 1% of the fees, so $10,000. And that's the way uh, you know these DeFi participants generate income on their crypto assets. It's not a bad but take for 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, what, what was that? I said that's not a bad take for 24 hours, oh, yeah. 24 hours Def- fees. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely not. Uh, so you might be like asking, like, what is the downside to providing liquidity? If, like, it seems like it's just free money, right? But there is one downside. There is one major downside, which is called impermanent loss. And the, the definition of impermanent loss is the opportunity costs of providing liquidity relative to like, just holding the two assets. So this is a really confusing uh, definition. So let's just go over an example to really bring it home. So let's take this exact same uh, liquidity pool, right? USDC ETH. And let's say you know we're back we're back to better times when the price of ether is trading at a thousand dollars. So if you want to provide if you want to provide liquidity, you have to deposit a 50-50 ratio of these two assets. So one ETH and one thousand one thousand USDC, and you can be a liquidity provider. And let's say there's after I provide liquidity, the pool now has ten ETH and ten thousand USDC, right? So I own ten percent of the pool, which means I'm entitled to ten percent of the fees. So let's say ETH moons, right? We're back to even better times back in uh, early May when the price of Ether trading uh, trading at roughly $4,000. But now you see that the 10 Ether is now worth more than 10,000 USDC. And you have to remember that you know these pools have to have a 50-50 ratio of these two assets. So what ends up happening is that liquidity pools, it's gonna rebalance. So if ETH goes up in value, it's gonna sell some ETH and buy more USDC with it so they can meet in the middle, right? So there's an equilibrium. So now there's, you know, there has to be an equal uh, ratio. There has, there's now five ETH and 20,000 USDC in the liquidity pool. But also remember that now you have 10% of the liquidity pool. So when I pull out, I get 0.5 ETH and 2,000 USDC instead of one ETH and 1,000 USDC. So this is this like refers to the impermanent loss where if I just held these two assets, I would have $5,000. But because I provide a liquidity, now I can only take out $4,000. And this is a 20% permanent loss. Um, obviously, like you, you make you earn fees in the middle, so maybe you earn more than a thousand dollars of fees, and then it's all worth it. But this is the risk of providing liquidity. And this is just like quick table of like you know if one asset moves too too to uh, moves up too fast, then like this is how much impermanent loss you would gain. Or it you, like, like you. it seems like to some degree, you know, there's there might be some reason because I've I've experienced this myself before, um, and I I really like liquidity. Uh, providing liquidity. I've done it before on Uniswap. I really like it when assets are just trading sideways. Um, oh yeah, that's yeah. like the that's the best case scenario. Um, once you start getting all this volatility, it, it becomes a much harder game to play. Um, and so it, this is a, a very useful tool, I think. For I mean, even in a bull market or a bear market, it can still be useful. But when markets are going sideways, you know, uh, providing liquidity, I think, is a great way to just earn um, on these on these platforms. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, like if if you're like pairing like two like very volatile assets, you might incur impermanent loss. But if you're pairing two uh, two assets that are correlated, right, uh, you might just gain the fees and incur zero impermanent loss. So, uh, but if you actually pair like the two same assets, right, for like stablecoin and stablecoin, there's like literally zero impermanent loss, and you just get you just earn all the fees. Yeah. So now that I went over like lending and borrowing and decentralized exchange. Let's just like now go over like what yield farming is, and yield farming, uh, to simplify, is like is a way to generate high yield with your crypto assets. In other words, getting paid to use DeFi applications to bootstrap growth. Um, and the one uh, I guess liquidity mining program, the yield farming uh, 
I guess, I guess platform that I like to use is Polygon and Aave. Uh, Polygon was a scaling solution for Ethereum that launched you know, roughly over a month ago. And you know when they first launched, there was no liquidity, right? Uh, there was like no money in the Polygon ecosystem. So to incentivize users to bring on their liquidity onto Polygon, they partnered with you know these DeFi blue chips like Aave and said, you know what, guys, like you know we launched, we're partnering with Aave. If you want to use our platform, like we'll literally pay you to use it, right? If you want to just try it out, if you don't like it, you can leave. But if you like it, then you can stick with us, and we'll pay you to use it. So this idea is that these liquidity mining programs, they're paying you to use the platform, right? So going back to Aave here, you see that deposit APY is 1.73%, but below it, you see there's a little Matic icon with 2.3% APR. So this is like how much Matic is paying you to use uh, Aave. And you see that on the borrow APY, you earn two, you, you pay 2.92% interest, but Matic will pay you 3.5% to borrow, right? So this is, well, so what I've been doing is I've been posting collateral, right? Earning interest, borrowing dollars against it, also earning me interest. And with the dollars I've been borrowing, I've been putting it in, into other yield farms, earning me yield. So it's like yield on yield on yield. And you can do this with dollars. So this is the way I've been generating passive uh, income with my dollars. But is there, and, is there um, how long, is there any timeline for how long that's going to last where they essentially pay you to, to borrow? <laughs> Yeah, so th th these things don't last forever. Uh, with the Avi partnership, this is actually going to go on until April of 2022. Um, these The rewards are front loaded in a way, so it's going to go down over time. But I mean, there are liquidity mining programs like everywhere. So if you're nimble enough and uh, if you do your research, then there are like always opportunities to earn yield on your assets. Uh, yeah, that being said, um, it, I guess like if you're hearing about this for the first time, it might seem like like you're just, there's like minting new tokens. Like this, like this doesn't even make any sense. Like what is the what is the risk, right? But if you think about it, um, it's, it's it's a really new and innovative form of capital formation. Because the analogy I like to use um, with liquidity mining is like let's take a look at Facebook, because Facebook their value comes from network effects. Like if my friends were on Facebook, I wouldn't download it. And if like my net, if, if I don't have a network of like people uh, that are on Facebook, then Facebook is worthless. So you would think that maybe Mark Zuckerberg would, you know, incentivize you know, early users by giving them like 10 shares of Facebook stock, right? This is similar to liquidity mining where, you know, these companies will incentivize early users by giving them, you know, these tokens or, you know, stock. Obviously Facebook can't do this because it's a security, but it's a similar idea. And then the early adopters would, you know, if, if they have Facebook stock, then they would show it to their friends as much as they can, because if Facebook, if Facebook becomes successful, then they would be rich. So it's a similar idea where these protocols, they have no liquidity to begin with. And to incentivize users to come on, they're like, you know what, if you provide liquidity, we'll give you tokens. And with these tokens, you can either accumulate them, right? If you want to speculate on the future price of these assets, or if you just want to take advantage of these high APRs, you can just... Uh, take these tokens and just dump them for an asset that you actually want. Uh, so this is like the idea of yield farming. You can like yield farm assets to speculate on or yield farm assets, then dump them for Bitcoin, like stack sats, buy Ether, or just buy more dollars. And this is the way I've been generating passive income with my dollars. Yeah. So, you know, essentially being paid to use DeFi. Sounds cool, but where can I get started? So uh, what I always recommend to my friends and family is if you're new, I would start off with the DeFi blue chips and learn how these uh, decentralized applications work, right? Uh, these DeFi blue chips, they're like, they've been battle tested, they've been audited many, many times. There's billions of dollars locked into these protocols. So, you know, it's relatively safe. There's always smart, uh, smart contract risk, but uh, I guess the larger protocols pose less risk. And once you're comfortable, you can expand and experiment with it. And because um, if you think about it, like if you're long ETH, you're essentially long DeFi because DeFi is the, is a killer use case for uh, Ethereum blockchain, at least in my opinion. So I believe that allocating even a small percentage of your portfolio just to experiment with DeFi will lead to significant alpha in the future. Uh, so that's, that's what I always say to my friends. And I think um, Polygon and uh, is the best way for new DeFi users to just try things out because they essentially have zero transaction fees. So even if you have a smaller wallet, you can still participate in DeFi. Like me personally, like uh, after using like Aave and the, these DeFi ap applications, I became more and more bullish on ETH and these DeFi, uh, DeFi tokens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, if you have time, uh, I, li I like to just do a quick tutorial uh, with Ben and I'll share my screen and borrow and lend on Aave and also earn 20% APY on Curve on just dollars and also farm Sushi and Matic tokens with dollars by providing liquidity on SushiSwap. 
All right, so if you want to use DeFi, the first thing you need to do is download MetaMask. And you can just, this is like a Chrome add-on, and you can also use it on your mobile phone or Safari. And you have to set up MetaMask for the Polygon ecosystem. And I can provide all the links to you in the description below. And once you set up all the MetaMask and uh, you know set up your Polygon ecosystem, what you have to do is you have to essentially bridge assets to the Polygon ecosystem. So what I the bridge I personally use is the uh, thematic bridge, the Polygon bridge. So for me personally, I bought Ether on Coinbase. I bridged it to the MetaMask wallet. And then I took uh, Ether from uh, the Ethereum blockchain to the Matic ecosystem through this link. So if you want to bridge over you know, even this much Ether, you can just transfer here and it'll take roughly 10 minutes to bridge. So I'm going to assume that we already did that. And uh, let's just go over you know, how do we use Aave, how do we use Curve, and how do we use Sushi to provide passive, uh, to generate passive income on crypto. And uh, there's this website called Matic.supply, where uh, it, this, this is a faucet that essentially gives you free Matic tokens. Uh, and you need Matic tokens because this is the gas token that you need to essentially run these smart contracts. And this is a free way to use Matic. And you know, with 0 .001, 0 0.001 Matic, you can do up to 100 basic transactions. So it's really, really easy and it's really, really cheap. So here's Aave here. Um, I, as you can see, I already have $1,000 of USDC in here, which is earning me this much interest. So let's just use Aave to borrow dollars. So let's just say I want to just borrow you know, $200 worth of USDC. You don't have to ask for permission. You don't have to, you know, fill out an application or a loan. All you do is just fill out these uh, smart contracts, give approval, and you can just easily uh, see. And now I already have $200 borrowed, which is I'm paying 3% uh, to borrow, but I'm also being paid 3.07%. So it's, a, it's, it's essentially a free loan. Right. And with, this, with these dollars, uh, do you have any questions? No, I mean, I was just, I, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's basically just a free loan because you're paying for it and you're getting paid back. <laughs> Um, to use their network, of course, that won't last forever. But you said April twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's it shows you how powerful this stuff can be. Yeah, and at the top right, you can see that I'm just like earning just free Matic tokens, right? Uh, which is super powerful. Uh, and one of the applications I like to talk about is Curve, right? This is a decentralized exchange uh, that focuses on, uh, I guess, dollars. Um, let's just go over to the homepage here. One sec. And Polygon and Curve, they also have a liquidity money program where if you deposit, if you provide liquidity right on dollars, you can earn 3.5% paid in dollars, as well as 18.2% paid in Matic, right? So this is 21.5%. This is like yield on yield on yield. So as you can see, I'm combining Aave and combining Curve to generate more yield. And obviously, if you just put, want to put $1,000 into Curve, you can generate more, more gains, but I'm just showing like how, how you can combine these different uh, DeFi applications as like kind of like Lego blocks to generate yield. And I think it's good practice to start using these protocols. So you can click on that, go to the deposit tab, take the $200 that I'm borrowing and just deposit and stake engage. And this is going to be roughly four transactions. And because transaction fees are new zero, it's like really, really easy to use. If you were doing this on the Ethereum blockchain, it would take like $20 to $40 per transaction. So Ethereum is really good at pricing retail out. <laughs> but with Matic, it's a, it's a scaling solution. Uh, so uh, it's really, really easy to use. And I argue that you know if you're a newly user in DeFi, you will understand the space better. Uh, so in the future, as blockchain becomes, and crypto becomes more mainstream, you'll just have like more knowledge and more alpha. And uh, yeah, so I, yeah, so now I have $200 here uh, deposited into Polygon which is going to earn me yield on dollars and yield on Matic. And if you go to the withdrawal tab, I can just claim my Matic whenever I want. Uh, I mean, I just deposit it, so I'm not earning any yield. But, you know, I'm just, you're just earning passive income on your dollars. Uh, that what's being said... What's interesting is, yeah. um, you know, with Matic over the last several several weeks, so I, haven't, I haven't actually spoken about Matic on my channel, but I've, I've you know, I probably will be one we talk about. Um, with, with the price going up so quickly, you know, some people can be hesitant to maybe buy it, <laughs> this is just a way you can get some without, you just kind of get it for free to some degree. I mean, just taking out a loan, earning interest or yield farming and whatnot. Um, yeah. do, you feel like this, do you feel like this is helping to drive, I mean, I, I know you're not necessarily talking price, but I mean, do you think this is somewhat responsible for the surge in price on Matic recently, or is that, you think it's completely unrelated? 
Yeah, I definitely think so. There's just so much usage for automatic and polygon ecosystem. I, I mean, I remember when BNB just shot up from forty dollars to like seven hundred dollars in the span of a few months because of Binance Smart Chain. And similarly, like over a month ago, there was like one billion dollars locked in Aave, and now there's eight billion dollars. So there's a search for yield, and as more and more people deposit, there's more trust, right? Uh, because like Aave is like a trusted DeFi application. And as Polygon has these partnership with these larger DeFi blue chips, um, I think it's building more trust. And because the user experience is so seamless, I mean, I've been having a lot of fun just farming Matic essentially for free using my dollars. <laughs> right. So like you said, like you can farm these volatile assets, right? You might be like, if you're conservative, you might not want to buy them like with your money, but you can just literally accumulate them with your dollars. And similarly, last thing I want to go over is providing liquidity. So let's see when to provide liquidity for USDC and DAI, right? So these are two, two of the same assets. So uh, you're not going to be facing uh, impermanent loss risk. So you can add uh, liquidity here. This is what it looks like. And the cool thing that I'd like to do is I can literally like use uh, Aave to just, I guess, earn or just borrow two, uh, two assets. So example, DAI and US USDC. So I'm, right now I'm being paid to provide liquidity because of these liquidity mining rewards. So I'm just going to borrow 200 DAI and 200 USDC, right? So 50-50 ratio of two assets, and then deposit it into uh, Sushi Swap to earn yield. So let me just borrow more here. And there's this thing called the health factor. Um, but because I'm essentially using dollars to borrow dollars, I can be a little more aggressive in like how much I'm borrowing against my collateral. Uh, but if I'm posting something like Bitcoin or ETH as collateral, which is a volatile asset, I wouldn't want to be super risky in or super aggressive in terms of like borrowing too much against it. Because if the value of your collateral goes down, then you're at risk of being right. Uh, liquidated. Right. Yeah. So let me just refresh this in case it uploads uh, updates. You know, while that's refreshing, one thing I, I, I've, I, you know, I've noticed in terms of yield farming and whatnot is some places they seem to have rates that are, are somewhat believable that make sense. Um, and then other places, uh -huh. it, it, it seems like it's like, how could that even be remotely sustainable? Or are there risks associated with it that are not being fully disclosed? I mean, like these rates seem a lot more reasonable, but... If you start exploring yield farming and you know this stuff too, if you just barely go down that that rabbit hole, you'll start seeing forty percent APY, eighty percent APY, a hundred percent APY, and I guess like how how does someone navigate that or how how do you navigate that and and trying to figure out like what are ones that make sense and will stand the test of time to some degree? Obviously, rates will come down over the long haul. I think for everything, but. How do you how do you weigh those risks when you're figuring out hey is this a good yield farm or is it or is it too risky to take on? Yeah, so as with anything, like with with the more risk you take, um, I guess it also comes with higher rewards. Uh, so I'm just showing examples of Aave, Curve, and Sushi because I consider them safe. I mean, uh, they've been around for many many months and they have billions of dollars locked into them. They've, to my knowledge, they've never been hacked. So you know, I, I can consider these yields to be safe. Um, because there are like these are amazing yields, I do think they're going to go down over time. Right. Uh, but in the meantime, like uh, you know, I, I can take advantage of these yields because I guess DeFi is such a new ecosystem that it's not being taken advantage of. And sometimes I encounter these yield farms with like ten thousand APRs and ten thousand APYs, and those are definitely higher risk. And obviously, like if they are if they are like good yield farms, then it's going to go down because more like money will flow to the best yields, right? Uh, so I generally, I, I generally focus on these lower risk yield farms with my dollars just to be conservative, but it's just, but I mean, it's just, I, I feel like just using these DeFi applications will just tr lead to like tremendous knowledge about like what makes DeFi so valuable and what, like, if you think about like why ETH has been going up so much, it's because, you know, there's, uh, there's so much, so much use cases in the DeFi ecosystem. Okay. So. While we were while we were talking, I just provided liquidity for a USDC and DAI, um, so I can just go to the yield tab here and click on this particular pool, and you can see that I have some LP tokens, and I need to essentially stake them in here to earn the twenty percent APY. Let me just approve it here, and similarly, um, 
to like the liquidity mining rewards. Uh, Sushi also has a liquidity mining program uh, with Polygon. So you can earn um, this. So in particular, I don't know if you can see it here, but uh, this pool is giving you 440 Sushi per day and roughly 6,000 Matic per day, right? Distributed like across different liquidity providers. So if you're, you know, if you're a more conservative investor and you're, you, you might want to speculate in the price of Matic or Sushi in the future, uh, but don't, maybe you don't want to buy it with your like dollars out, right? Well, this is a way to use your dollars, provide liquidity, and form these tokens uh, to accumulate them over time. Um, and so, Laura, I guess it's a uh, instead of instead of just outright taking your money and then buying them, you're you're getting them in a in a different way that still has its risks, of course, it still has risk, but it's a completely different completely different game to play, I guess, than just buying it at spot price and hoping hoping the price goes up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah, this, so this this has been like the yield farming uh, that I've been uh, deploying. And as you can see, I just provided uh, liquidity, then I staked these liquidity uh, LP tokens uh, to pr to like prove that like hey hey sushi swap I'm providing liquidity. And now, as you can see, like I've already accumulated point. <laughs> I mean, barely anything, but over time, this will add up, right? Don't schedule uh, your so, Forbes interview just yet, right? Yeah, don't schedule your Forbes interview just yet. But uh, yeah. It, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, Forbes will talk about DeFi in the future and oh, you'll be like, course, yeah. I already know this stuff. Yeah. So just to wrap up, you know, I have dollars deposited on Aave, earning the yield. I'm borrowing, uh, I borrow $200 of USDC being paid to do so, or essentially free and earning yield on Curve, right? 20%. And I also borrowed $200 with the DAI, $200 with the USDC, which I'm being paid to do so. And now I'm earning uh, roughly 20%, right? Uh, in yield and just uh, earning Sushi and Matic tokens. So this is the power of DeFi, taking your dollars, putting them to work, generate passive income. And with Matic, uh, the transaction fees are so low that uh, it's really, really easy to just you know test the waters, just experiment with it. And I'm, I guarantee that you know once you start using these DeFi applications, your, your conviction in crypto and DeFi will only grow. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Well, you have I, any questions? I, I want to ask one, a couple more questions. So when when we talk about when we talk about this yield farming, um, the, the sort of the catch twenty two right of yield farming is yeah. Hey, everyone wants to yield farm, but you don't really want to tell people what your yield farm is because if everyone starts doing it, then your yield will go down. So it's one of these things where it's like it's hard to learn about the best you know the best way to farm. So my question, I guess, is you just showed us one of the things you're using. Um, if if 10,000 people were to just go do exactly what you just did, does it affect your returns at all? Yeah, well, if yeah, if, if more and more money piles into these yield opportunities, my yields will go down. <laughs> uh, that, that That's like the risk of the yield farms, I guess. It's right. like if you find a good yield farm and other people find out about it, then I guess my yields get hammered. Uh, like, But I, I'm, I, I, like, I like to be transparent about these types of things because I think like with DeFi, like, I feel like not a lot of people like really understand DeFi, but a lot of people own ETH, so they're effectively long DeFi. <laughs> so right. I just like to showcase these uh, opportunities, and like I I'm like I'm like pretty passionate about like personal finance. Um, so I, I think like instead of putting your I guess dollars at a bank earning zero interest, you can even use like BlockFi to earn uh, over eight percent interest, right. or just you know start using these DeFi applications. And you know, once you start like understanding like this ethos of decentralization and I guess removing the middleman uh, with smart contracts, you'll understand like, oh, maybe this is a better system. Maybe this is the future of finance. And you know, these questions are something that I consider every single day. And you know, it just <laughs> it just adds on to my conviction in, in DeFi. Well, I think it's great that you're sharing this stuff. I mean, I, to some degree, people. I mean, we're still relatively early compared to people that might start doing it in 2025 or 2028, you know, and, and I think it's great that you've shared this stuff. Hopefully, hopefully this tutorial is, is going to be useful for some people out there that they've heard of yield farming, they've heard of DeFi, and then they don't really know, you know, what to do with that. And they don't really know a trusted source. It's great that you showed us some of the, as you, as you call them, like the, the blue, the blue chips, to, you know, of, of this uh, yield farming type stuff. And, and so that, these are, are ones that are have at least so far they've they've stood the test of time. They don't really seem like yeah. they're going anywhere, and and you're you're basically just getting paid to take some loans at some places, and <laughs> I guess those aren't going to last forever. Um, 
Yeah. But anyways, um, it was great to have you on. Um, if you're if you're watching, if you're still watching, if you made it through the whole video uh, and you're not subscribed to Taiki yet, I, would, I still would encourage you to go subscribe to him now. I think he's got uh, 20 or 30,000 subscribers, something like that. So let's help him out, uh, help grow his channel. But yeah, everyone, thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed here if you're not. And uh, hopefully we'll continue to, to talk about this stuff in the future. I'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.